Hello everyone. So yeah, this is a bit of a particular session. There's nothing technical here. Uh, that's about uh, that book we've uh, written for uh, for children and about eBPF. Uh, so in case you don't know me, I'm Quentin, working at Isovalent on Cilium's data path. Um, I maintain BPF tool. I've been working with the BPF since uh, 2016. And at the time, the, the, the references, the resources we had to get into eBPF to get started with it, to get more familiar with the topic, were uh, more scarce than today. So one of my first contributions to the eBPF community was to write that blog post at the time, uh, trying to list all the resources we had. Uh, nowadays, Nowadays, uh, we have a lot more resources, thankfully. So we have tutorials, we have a few books about eBPF. We have eBPF.io, which is a, a great uh, website to, uh, to get started. We have a lot of blog posts and plenty of other resources that are not listed on this site. So we can um, accommodate the needs uh, for the, the newcomers to eBPF, uh, trying to, to get into this thing that heard about for Linux. Uh, we can also provide some more documentation for the uh, more advanced users uh, trying to deploy it in production to, to understand and uh, improve the verifier. Uh, but we still don't really have any resources for uh, my daughter, which is who is four years old, and is asking about, well, what's what's this B for? Like you have it on your t-shirts, you have it on your jumpers, why, why the B? And that, well, that also stands for any decision taker really uh, who've heard that uh, they can uh, improve uh, and program the kernel with eBPF, but hey, what's a kernel in the first place? So we've been trying to, uh, to address this. So we've um, taken inspiration from uh, the existing book for Kubernetes, uh, which uh, which tries to uh, to to explain Kubernetes in a simple way through uh, a story for children, and as you can see on the on the picture at the bottom, there are uh, the illustrations on the left side of the book, and then diagrams and explanations on the right side. So we've been doing that. We've been doing the same for eBPF. When I say we, this is uh, a colleague of mine, Bill Mulligan, and myself, and uh, we contracted a, an illustrator for, for doing the illustrations. So we are very proud to uh, present Buzzing Across Space, which is the resulting book. Uh, as you can see from that physical copy here, we've got both diagrams and drawings. But on the slides, I'll just go for the story for today because, uh, well, I just thought it was not necessary to go for eBPF basics here. So. So this is a story of Captain Tux flying his starship through space and basically trying to uh, to make business, right? To uh, to carry things from one planet to another one, uh, to carry passengers, to carry all kind of cargo. And he's accompanied by his crew. Uh, there are passengers on the ship. Everything's going well, or is it? Every time he needs to change some part of the of the of the engines of the equipment uh, it gets a bit tricky because sometimes you got to change some pieces while you are in flight or when you are on a not really a suitable planet like if it's all water on the planet you uh, it's tricky to 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 fix the shit to to fix uh, everything we need so here we can see uh, two, two, two characters trying to, uh, to change uh, a piece of the reactor uh, in space. And Captain Tux uh, looks concerned. It's, uh, it works, but it's not ideal. So how can, can he improve the situation? And one day he reviews the crew and, oh, he finds that EB is here. He didn't really remember about EB. She's been around for years, just like BPF in the kernel. And, and Captain Tux has this idea, he thinks, you're small enough to, uh, to go into the engine room and to fix it from the inside. So do you, do you want to help? Are you interested in, in uh, trying this solution? And of course, he is uh, really eager to, to help. So what gives? So first, they have to get into the engine room. And 
Ibi is very willing to help, but she's a bit afraid of breaking stuff, right? The, the engine room is very smoky, so we've got to, to, to get a very good eyesight uh, to avoid breaking things. So Captain Tux makes sure that only the bees that um, can see well can go into the, uh, the engine room. So that translates into Captain Tux providing them with uh, goggles so they can see through the smoke and don't break thing, which is, of course, a picture of the verifier for the for the kernel. And they start working in the engine room, but soon they realize that they would like to uh, to be more efficient, to go faster at fixing things. So they ask for um, some kind of special device, some kind of special droid that could uh, translate the instruction from regular language into special uh, I don't remember I think we could it buzz code in the in the book which is of course the picture of the uh, JIT compiler that we, we we need to be to, to go faster to be more efficient so Captain Tux says no problem and he works on a, on a device to do just that and uh, the bees start to work more and more and they establish a workshop inside of the engine room uh, they get these uh, shelves so that they can store things and share things. So one bee is uh, handing over stuff to the other one, uh, just like we have maps to uh, to store data and um, and keep states and share um, to sh share data with user space. And this is going well. This is going very well. The ship uh, starts improving in all sorts of ways. Uh, it's getting faster. All the changes are now uh, quick and efficient, and that's good. And the bees are thinking we should maybe go and talk to the passengers, see if we can also improve their um, their trip, their uh, experience uh, during the flight. So the passengers have long been complaining about sending messages that they can uh, do, but not in their own encoding. So uh, is there a way that we could uh, maybe be more flexible for every kind of messages going in and out of the ship. Uh, well, yes, there is. The bees are working on that. Can we also be more efficient for uh, sending them in terms of performance while well, receiving them too? So uh, here we can see uh, the bees and the gopher, but mainly the bees, uh, trying to install a big antenna which uh, represents XDP uh, on the ship. And once uh, they have improved networking, they turn into traceability, observability, um, and we have here the uh, the detective bee trying to understand everything that's happening inside of the engine room. Uh, we can also observe on the left uh, part of the drawing a flame graph on the on the screen. So that's the bees from inside of the engine room trying to uh, profile and understand everything that's going on. And so this is all going great. So great that the the evil ship that you can see in the picture is uh, trying to uh, to attack the ship to uh, to steal the technology to uh, really to 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 by by greed to uh, to destroy things. Happily, we have the bees working on the ship, and they've also been optimizing the the, the lasers uh, from the from the starship. So we have. Really, eBPF that can be used for defense and, and security, and that uh, helps defending the ship uh, in that case. Alas, the ship has been slightly damaged during the fight, so it had to land uh, on a planet and to, um, to to bring some more more pieces into to make the repairs. The bad thing here is that the pieces have changed since the the previous model was used to build the ship. So we have an issue, how can the bees uh, use these new pieces to replace the other ones that were different? And they're thinking that's a big issue, but uh, talking with uh, Captain Tux, the bee realized maybe we can do some kind of map of the ship so they build this um, pretty awesome scanner to, to map all components from the ship to their locations and to the shape they have to everything they need. Uh, so that's uh, Corey, obviously, and uh, they managed to uh, to go on and fix the ship and move forwards. So we're getting near the end of the story. Uh, the bees have been talking with passengers. They've been helping with the ship, 
helping with the different use cases from the passengers. And they are now deciding that they should also be helping at other locations uh, in the galaxy. So they are kind of splitting up the hive and some of them are working, um, are going away to work on different ships on different, um, I don't know, different uh, environments. And that stands really for the different uh, run times that we're having uh, for eBPF. Like now we have eBPF for Windows. We have some user space interpreters. Uh, we have a lot of projects based on eBPF. Um, so that's the kind of uh, yeah, diaspora of the, of the bees uh, everywhere uh, in space. And uh, the last page is just that really. Uh, the bees moving on to uh, new new planets, new territories uh, to, um, to spread their good word to spread efficiency and uh, flexibility, programming everything uh, everywhere. And they live happy for, for a very long time after that. And that's a very happy ending. So that's it. You do? <laughs> t tell me, I can explain more. What? <laughs> room and the person running the calendar room is saying, no bees here, please. Uh, I, I... Did someone send no bees? <laughs> Are you referring to... No, I'm or... just kidding. I think that should... <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, sorry again. It's okay. <laughs> I conveyed my message. <laughs> okay, so I hope you like the story. Uh, I have some books here to uh, some physical copy if you're interested. Uh, happy to uh, to give them if anyone's uh, interested in receiving a free copy. Um, and that's it. I hope you you enjoyed the the story. We enjoyed the book. Thank you. <laughs>